If you wish to be a pro artist, this video might act as a roadmap for you. It's just filled with my own personal knowledge and experience working as an illustrator for the last decade. This video might be a bit longer, but it's packed with useful information, so make sure you don't miss anything out. Now, instead of making you look at my face for the whole video, I have a better idea. I'll let you enjoy a time lapse of an artwork that I recently made, and along the way, I will talk to you about the steps that you can take if you want to become a professional illustrator. So without wasting any more time, let's do this. First off, as much as being a pro artist is an appealing idea, it's loads of work, passion, determination and practice. So it's always important to know if it's the right career choice for you. Because oftentimes you are just in love with the idea of being an artist, but you do not enjoy the process of it all. You don't like the endless grinding, learning new things and improving slowly and steadily. Like someone who only likes to have a great Hollywood body but is not willing to hit the gym and put in the work. If that is the case, the road Road will be very difficult for you. I'm not talking about the occasional hiccups and art blocks along the way, that is something else and that is completely natural. I'm talking about always dreading the idea of practicing and the unwillingness to give what it takes to be good at art. So ask yourself, what is art for you? Is it just a hobby or a full-time career choice? Because if it's a hobby, then you can easily do your main job, put food on the table, and whenever you like, you can draw stuff for yourself or even sell some of your art as a side hustle. So in this situation, even when you're not drawing, at least you're not starving. Or maybe you're doing it because it's cool and gets you some likes on Instagram. That wouldn't take you so far either. Because what will happen when, for instance, the algorithm changes and the likes stop pouring in? Will you stop making art? If your answer is yes, then your motivation might be coming from the wrong place. But if you love drawing and creating and really want to make it a full-time career, then it requires a level of persistence. So ready yourself for that. You must have heard the 10,000 hours rule for mastery anything right so if you're willing to spend 10,000 hours on your digital art skills then that's great you'll definitely improve and master your craft and eventually be a pro artist so now once you have got that out of the way the next step would be to start on this remarkable adventure and how are you going to do it you're going to learn art. But how can you learn art? Well, there would be two ways to go about it. The first would be to go to art school. Now, I don't know which country are you from, if there is a good art school there or not, and if it costs too much. Like everything else, art school might have their pros and cons too. It provides hands-on experience, collaborative and competitive environment, but it also usually costs a lot. On the other hand, you can go with the other route of being a self-taught artist. There is a certain level of commitment and discipline required to be a self-taught artist. You'll have to dedicate hours to learning and practicing and will have to do it consistently and productively. You'll find so many free online resources to learn from, like YouTube tutorials for instance, or maybe courses from places Places like Skillshare which charges a very low fee but if you think that is not something you'll be able to do that is completely understandable sometimes you just want to have a much more targeted education with assignments and something to work on and for that you can also go for the online education route there are so many great online educational institutes that you can learn from. They offer online classes so you can work from the comfort of your own home with pretty much flexible hours and learn your own way. Now with the help of much better tools, you have much more collaborative and interactive classes that you can be a part of. When I was starting out, I personally took some classes from CGMA, which is also known as Computer Graphics Master Academy, which is also the kind sponsor for today's video. So back Back in the days when I was starting out, I really wanted to have a course that is in-depth, clarifies the basics for me, and teach me techniques that I wouldn't find so easily on the internet. And above all, I wanted a course that can really give me an idea on where to begin, what to practice first, and targeted assignments to help me improve my art. So I took a class called Digital Painting 101 from CGMA, and it was quite helpful. CGMA is a leading online art institute which teaches concepts art, illustrations, 3D modeling, matte painting, anatomy, anything and everything related to digital art. It has a virtual classroom with limited number of students per class. You can also interact with other students and take a look at what they are creating. And these classes are taught by industry-leading experts who have worked on some of the 
biggest and well-known games and films. CGMA has recorded lectures which you have lifetime access to and in addition to that they also have a question and answer sessions. This way they can really give personal feedback on your artwork. The courses are usually eight weeks long with assignments and stuff so you always have something to work on. They were kind enough to offer a 5% discount to 10 of my subscribers who use the discount code mentioned in the description. So if you are serious about learning Learning from an online art institute, be sure to claim that discount code for yourself. After learning comes practice, and realistically, you have to practice a lot to get better at art. You also have to up your game when it comes to technical skills like learning softwares for painting and for 3D, discovering pipelines and finding the best solutions to get the job done effectively. You'll also have to draw a lot from reference and build your visual vocabulary. The more you draw using reference, the better you get at understanding design and shape language. Eventually, you'll start developing your own art style and find your favorite genres to work on. For me, I prefer realistic looking art related to the fantasy genre because I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan and love everything related to swords and dragons. Based on my love for these, my personal work is usually comprised of fantasy illustrations which is what attracts similar clients and therefore I manage to work with companies producing fantasy illustrations for card games at a large scale. So find what you like to draw what your favorite genre is and what you would like to continue working on. Create a body of work aligned with that interest and you'll eventually attract similar clients. Which brings me to the next point which is to tailor your portfolio according to the studios or companies that you'd like to work with. If you want to work on The Last of Us and Naughty Dog games then you better have some photorealistic kick-ass post-apocalyptic artwork that fits the genre. If you want to work with Magic the Gathering or Fantasy flight games, you better have some nice finished fantasy card illustrations in your portfolio. While compiling your portfolio, make sure you've put some thought into those artworks. They should have something special about them, so try making them less generic. They could either feature designs that look special or maybe an idea, a story, maybe they can convey a mood or feeling, so be mindful of that. Also make sure that your quality is consistent and you have a significant body of work. I have had the opportunity to hire illustrators at my studio and whenever I see a portfolio where some pieces look technically a lot better than the others, that makes me a little suspicious because one or two good pieces might be a happy accident. But consistent good looking and technically and creatively strong portfolio is what catches the most attention. So in short, just put some of the best looking artwork in your portfolio and find a balance between quality and quantity. And lastly, it's super important to enjoy the process. Enjoy the journey instead of obsessing over the destination. After all, it's your creative urge that compels you to be artists in the first place, so you better enjoy that. First, find ways to get inspired inspired, fuel your creativity and produce art for the love of it. Always have a positive attitude towards learning and improving. In today's world, we have access to all the best art in the world through social media and the internet. It can be inspiring, but for some it can be depressing as well. So what I mean about being positive is that when you take a look at a jaw-dropping artwork on the internet, instead of saying, I'll never be as good as that artist, try saying, I want to work towards being as as good as that artist. Because if you're saying you'll never be as good, you've already given up. And always compare yourself from your previous self and not somebody else. If you worked hard on improving your art for let's say a year, compare that to your art from the previous year. If you see a difference, then that's great. It means you really are improving. Effective learning is also important, so make sure you are trying to constantly learn the areas that you find yourself weak in and get yourself out of the comfort zone every once in a while. If something gets super easy for you to create, move on to something else. That way you continue learning and your mind comes up with creative problem solving ideas which will be super useful for you in the long run. Also, join art communities, interact with other artists, see what they are doing, learn something new from them, and build your network. In fact, you can join our Discord as well if you like and share your art there too. 
I personally think that it's also really important to familiarize yourself with whatever is going on in the industry. So basically what that means is to keep yourself updated with the latest trends, tools, techniques that might be useful for you. You constantly need to learn new ways to do things more effectively, whether it's learning a new software or experimenting with a whole different work process. If you are skillful, have a great portfolio, a good online presence or a network work and can make yourself useful for companies or projects then you'll get noticed and get hired as well all right so the artwork is now complete let's take a look I really hope that you found this video very useful and learned something new along the way. If you did, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up and comment down below. Let me know your journey as an artist, the challenges that you face and the things that you want to learn. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.